Sit for a while. Looks like five horse bricks and stratton, carburetor and gas tank. Yeah, that's what it is. I was wondering if you could take a look at it. Woo! Woo! It smells funky. Yeah, it smells like it's got a barber shit. Been sitting a long time. It's been sitting outside for a while, probably like five years. So uh, I was wondering if I could get it fixed. Oh yeah, we'll fix it up. I got, I got, I got some tricks to fix this. Okay, cool. Good. All right, come back later. When we get done wrestling, we'll call you. Okay, sounds good. All right, see ya. All right, have a good one. Bye. See ya. All right, back to wrestling. Okay, that feller done rung in this uh, Briggs and Stratton carburetor and gas tank that had been sitting a long time with full of junk in the tank and everything. He come in while we was wrestling. So I went ahead and already pre-cleaned and pre-prepped everything to save time. Now, a trick to cleaning these gas tanks is we soak it in white vinegar. We fill the thing all the way up. Actually, we have a five gallon bucket and we submerge the whole tank in there, but you can just pour it in there and fill it up to the tippy top and let it sit. Now, you may have to do it more than one or two times because as it starts to eat the rust out of there and the varnish, you have to Take it, dump it out, clean it out. We take a pressure washer and we spray pressure washer in there. Another trick is to put some uh, nuts and bolts or some uh, pea gravel in there and put the cap on and kind of shake it and shake it around. And if you have uh, some kind of old paint shaker or something, you can, you can bolt this in a paint shaker and shake it all up. You'll get that thing looking like new. The only problem is sometimes these tanks are so rusted that it'll actually rust all the way through the tank and then the tank is junk. Then you gotta get a new tank. So I'm gonna explain to you uh, how this carburetor on these Briggs and Stratton five horses work and that'll help you to understand how it works and that'll help you to understand how to fix it, okay? So, these carburetors have a long tube that comes down that goes inside the tank. And so what it does, and then this side here, this is the fuel pump side. This is a fuel pump that's on here. So how this thing works is, when you're pulling the, to start it, it's pumping that pump. So it's gonna draw the fuel up out of the tank and it's gonna dump it inside here. This is like a float bolt. And then it fills it all the way up and then there's a little cutout on the sides, on each side. So when it gets all the way full, it just goes right back into the tank. So when this is running, it's just pumping gas constantly and keeping that bowl full, all right? And then this here, this leg here, that got a little tiny hole in it. That's your main jet. So that's where it sucks the fuel up, pushes it through, the, through here, and that's what makes it run. So if you got one of these that just running and dying, running and dying, only run on choke, or, or if you spray something down the throat of it, Chances are that little hole is plugged up or there's a bunch of junk in here in this little float bowl area. Another problem with these is this tube here will get a crack in it, it gets split. Can you zoom in on that, Mr. Cameraman? Can you get that right there, that zoom in on that? Find that crack? Can you see that? There's a crack in there, that's split. Now you can't buy just this part. So what we do here is I take a piece of 3 16th brake tube and you get at the auto parts store. You can buy a little short piece and cut it off and I'll make a new one. And then I go and I go to the parts store and I buy a new tube. There's part number for the tube. You get that? Here's that new pickup tube with a screen on the bottom. And then what I do is I press this back in Press that in there. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then this, I'm gonna heat it up and shove it on the end of here. But what you have to do is, you have to measure the depth of the tank. Now I got me a little measure 
that I can measure the depth because you don't want this tube to stick all the way down too far and you don't want it to be up too high. You want it to be just a little bit off the bottom, just a skosh off the bottom. Now if you don't have one of these, you can, you can make something, you can get a, a stick or a long screwdriver or something in there and mark it and get your depth. And then what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. You press this back in, 3 16 one another thing you want to do is you want to grind a little edge on it. Grind a little radius on both ends. So it makes it go back in easier. You just tap that right back in there. Let me get a hammer. Hold on, hold on. Tapping in straight now. All right. Now I got my depth here. You gotta allow a little bit for the gasket. So I'm gonna want this to be right about there. Now what, what it is, the original one, you ain't gonna be able to slide it on, it's too small. So see how much, see how much it's longer it is? So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut these little steps off. Then I'm gonna take my heat gun, gotta have one of these. These heat guns. This is handy. I'm gonna heat this up a little bit and soften it up. Now don't overheat it, cause you'll melt it. Heat it up a little bit, then you can shove it on there. Then you can check your depth, and then shove it on there. And if you want, as, as an extra, extra, you can uh, glue it on with crazy glue. Because uh, crazy glue is impervious to gasoline, so it won't eat it away, okay? Okay, I got this tube back on here, and I've made sure that that little jet's clear. I rotted it out. Another thing we use, which works good, you can get locally. Another thing you can get locally are these torch tip cleaners. See, they got like little files on there. But see, some of them have a little extended tip. Well, I cut that off. So I get right down to the file. Then you find one that fits in there, and you just kind of clean it out. Just rot it out, clean it like you're cleaning your teeth. <laughs> and then you know, put in your, uh, put your pump, your pump spring and cap back in. Up, oh, that one's got some booger on it there. Put your new diaphragm on. Put the cover on, put the screws in, put the new tank gasket on, put it all back together, and there's your dinner. Okay, here it is, all back together. New pump, new tank gasket, new diaphragm, new tube, new pickup tube. It should be ready to go. Now these, these uh, gas tank carburetors set up like this, Briggs and Strap have been making them forever. This is the newer version. The older version works just about the same way. It just got an adjustment over here where you can, a high speed adjustment. This is the low speed adjustment on this one. So make sure that's clear too. When you take it apart and you clean this, make sure you clean it real good.